camera already. We have t-shirts in the back for everyone. Um, did everyone see the presentation time slot uh, sheet that I sent out over email? Is everyone good with that? You guys want to see it again, or does that all make sense? This is your last chance to speak up before yeah. the time slots are locked in, and if you're not there at that time, exactly. You're zero. <laughs> exactly. So this is how it's gonna work. It's gonna we're gonna have like 20 minutes of opening, kind of thank yous for the judges and prayer and all that stuff, and then at around nine, right at 9:20, we're gonna have the graduate presentations go first. Um, we have three of those, or a short break, and then the six undergraduate presentations will follow. Um, this is pretty good estimate on when things will happen, but if we're running faster than we think, and the teams are ready, we're just gonna go. So make sure you guys um, are there throughout the day and are ready. Um, can any of you guys, are any of you guys not planning on being there the whole day for whatever reason? Like you have another commitment you have to be at? Because you're expected to be there all day unless something comes up. Like I remember one girl, she had a wedding, she had a gift in the afternoon, so she wasn't gonna stay the whole time. But does that, is there any conflict, conflicts with you guys or not really? Okay, cool. So this shouldn't be a problem then. We'll just, we'll let you know. We'll get you mic'd up right before you go on. Um, you guys will have a clicker to move your own slides along. So as you guys are finishing up your presentations and stuff, practice advancing your slides and doing that. You'll be in control of that. Unless something happens and it breaks, you'll be in control of moving your slides along on competition day. So be ready for that. Um, let's see, going back to the business mixer now, I'm not, and I'm going all over the place, but for the business mixer and the competition day, uh, we expect to attire as business professionals. So dress to impress, look your best, feel good, look good, all that stuff. You want to be taken seriously, especially when you're in front of the judges and they're you know, scoring your presentation, right? You don't want to look sloppy in, in front of judges, okay? So just remember that. Um, let's see, remember too, Definitely practice. Keep practicing for your pitches. It's 70% of your score for the plan you turned in. Don't stress about that anymore. It's only 30%. 70% is going to come from your pitch. Um, and make sure you guys are sending in your power, your Google Slides presentations to me by tomorrow night. I need those by tomorrow night so that I can make them all into one huge presentation and then give that to our IT team so they can put it all together and get ready to present. Okay. So if you guys don't have, if you guys don't send me your presentation by Thursday night, I'm not gonna be able to put in the big one and you guys aren't gonna be able to present. So if something comes up, please, please, please email me, but otherwise that's what, that's it. That's the, that's the truth for that. Um, let's see, some other notes. Oh, just some little things. Um, like I said, with be, being professional, the whole day you're there, you're on stage, not just when you're actually on stage, you're always being looked at and by the judges, and so if you're kind of goofing off or acting out or whatever, the judge is gonna notice that, it's not gonna look, look well on you. So make sure you guys are respectful of all the other teams participating, like that goes with staying and watching and being attentive to the other teams. And it also gives you a good look at the other teams and afterwards, if you don't win, you're like, oh, okay, I thought I didn't win. Or you win, you won, you're like, yeah, I won. Like it's, it, if you leave and you come back, you're not gonna be able to know how you did against the other teams unless you, know, you can have that kind of ranking in terms of how you did. Um, yeah, do you guys have any questions about all this kind of stuff coming up? Yeah, Handheld mic? T-shirt mic? You guys will be mic'd up, so I think it will be... I think they're lapel. I think lapel they, mic. they're either lapel mics, and they, we got over-the-ear over ones too, so I think we have the option of both. Okay. So if you don't like the over-the-ear one, there could be like a lapel one, or if you're wearing clothes that it won't work It won't be handheld. It's not gonna be handheld. You yeah. won't have to worry about it. I'll be on the handheld mic as I introduce you guys and stuff, but you'll have one that's on you and you won't have to worry about it. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, one thing about our judges, I just want to tell you about our judges a little bit so you guys kind of know um, just a little bit about them and stuff. For to Friday night, excuse me, Friday night, our 90 second judges, we have Dave and Rhonda Penn. So we have a two, uh, two judge team. In the past, we only had one. This is kind of cool. We have two people judging. Um, their husband and wife team, Dave Penn, is a financial advisor. He's been doing that since 1998. Um, he's director of retirement services for ML Stern and Company. He's a broker uh, based in Beverly Hills, and he serves as vice president of Southwest Securities. So that's Dave and then Rhonda, his wife, has had 25 years working in career development, entertainment, public relations, architecture, education, and financial services. And she's the operational manager who oversees uh, office procedures, compliance, accounting, human resources, and benefits. So these people are very 
well versed in what you guys are going to be talking about. They're going to know you have a good 90 second pitch, and just if you're hitting all the time points with your business in that close time frame. Um, and then our live judges, we have five. Um, Mima Ransom, who's the founding chair member at FIDM, which is the Fashion Institute of Design and Merchandising, if you guys don't know what that is. Uh, Andrew Meyer, he's on the member, he's a member of the Board of Advisors and Interim Executive at Neurologic. Uh, Steve Smith is a business executive coach and he does management and marketing consulting. Uh, William Alsner, he's an attorney and he has experience practicing um, the following um, fields of bankruptcy, construction, uh, mortgage, banking and finance, a lot of things. So he's gonna be able to see a lot of different things like, okay, this business, has, you have to go through these steps. So they're gonna have a lot of these questions based on their field and they're gonna be able to provide you with a lot of questions. So be ready for questions and anything. Um, basically what I'm trying to say. But these judges are, they're experienced and they know what they're talking about and they'll be ready to hit you with a lot of questions. So just be ready for that. Come ready for, ready to give an answer and to formulate an answer even if you don't know it, know how to say that, right? Be like, I don't totally know the answer to that. I'd love to look into that and I'd love your help and expertise along the way. Something like that, right? Don't lie. Don't call you a lie. Exactly. Thank you, Alex. <laughs> um, and without further ado, we have Kenny up here uh, to kind of give our, um, what would you call it? Just top 10 tips for a presentation? For, for the okay. competition deck. Well, thank you, thank Kenny. You. Kenny, uh, just a brief introduction. Um, direct, the BGC director the last two years, the year before that, him and his two other teammates won the competition. So he has experience running everything and seeing it from kind of like a back end of what works and what doesn't, as well as competing. So um, yeah, just give it up for Kenny and thanks for being here. Hey you guys. So like Josh said, I graduated two years ago now, um, but competed the first year of the competition and one of three team members who took first place and then uh, was involved in directing the competition the last two years watch 
where you're going. Right? Like the where where you look will draw everyone else's attention. <laughs> okay, here's something that uh, our team did accidentally that many people pointed out was particularly powerful. Use active language. Our company does this, right? We are in the business of this, right? Not, if we start this company, we will do this, right? The company exists. Even if you haven't sold anything yet, you talk about the company as if it exists. So who's got a, what do you guys have? What's the name again? The STEM gym. STEM gym, right? STEM gym. So STEM gym is an after school program that does this. Not, if we get the funding, we will start STEM gym that will do this. It's, there's a psychological difference everyone that's listening should pick up on, okay? Um, talk up the story of your business. So everyone's got some type of story, some are stronger than others. I was working with a, our company that one was a coffee roasting company, specialty coffee, and there were three of us. And we had traveled together uh, the year before and so the story was that the three of us traveled together, we tried coffee all over the world, it was a very powerful bonding experience with different communities. We came back and saw the need of the people that we had worked with and decided to start a company that would give back proceeds from the communities that we sourced the coffee from, right? That's a story. The people, as much as it's business and it's hard data, it's still story. That's what people look to and that's what they'll remember. Most the judges are going to sit through nine presentations. They're not going to remember every number from everyone's presentation. But they will remember you as individuals, and they will remember the story of the business. So that's, that's very important. Uh, OK, <laughs> along the same lines, don't forget to mention and talk about yourselves as members of, of the team, right? Or as the company. So right now, has anyone sold anything? Is anyone making money yet? No one is, okay. So there, at this stage, an investor is investing in the people, in the founders of the company. So you have to convince them that you're trustworthy and you're worth investing money in. Unless you've got intellectual property, right, or you've already got sales, really the only thing that they've got to invest in is the founders. So your credibility, which is what you say about yourself, dress, it's how you stand, it's the whole package, is what I've had, uh, we had a judge for a couple of years who was a venture capitalist and the CEO of a $300 million credit card company, and he said, at this stage, you invest in the people. So if someone's going to cut a check for, insert your number, 20000 50000 100000 a million dollars, maybe more. But they're cutting that check really to you. So you gotta convince them you and your team are worth that. Okay, uh, address your competition head on, right? So talk about why your company can and will beat the competition, right? What makes you unique from Mathnasium, for example, from whatever other after school programs are out there? Right, what makes you unique from a dry clean service that picks up your laundry? Right? At the same time, you're not trying to bash your competitors. Right? If you spend time bashing your competitors, it only brings you down. Right? You, you, go, to, I don't know, you go to an interview and you talk about how the last job you were at was terrible. Right? That doesn't make someone want to hire you. Right? So you're not, you're not bashing the competitors, but you are demonstrating and explaining why you're going to be successful even though there's five other companies that do something similar, right? Along the same thing, don't say that you have no competitors. Mm -hmm. If you say you have no competitors, they're probably going to discount everything you're saying. You have competitors in some manner. Um, this goes really well with the competitive advantage and U.S. competition and things like that in Britain. So the things that you've been kind of writing about that and thinking about that, which will really
really well in this part of the game. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. 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 So you have competitors. Who is someone here doing a nonprofit? Okay. You are the only one who might get away be able to get away with saying you don't have competitors. Well, I, I found two. But okay. okay. Depending on how you present it, <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, but that could change. And what I what I mean by that is like you can go up there. The judges will be looking for you to say you have no competitors to discount what you're saying. If you go up there and tell them, I have no competitors, but there's two other companies who are also after this same mission, mm -hmm. right? Because your, your goal isn't to make money. Mm -hmm. So you're not trying to take money that they would have otherwise made. Mm -hmm. You're trying to help as many people as possible and give them a you know, better experience in, mm -hmm. through a really challenging time. Right? So if anyone other than you says I have no competitors, you, you're gonna have a problem. But if you can say it if you explain, right? <laughs> there are other companies, other nonprofits that are doing similar work. But since this is a nonprofit and we're all working towards the same goal, right? So we had to kind of discount that. Uh, practice, <coughs> practice, practice. So I can say from experience. We didn't have the most unique idea the first year we're working. But we definitely spent the most time on it, both in writing and preparing and in practicing. So this is where the you're convincing the judges that you're worth investing in. So the way you present and the way you articulate yourself makes all the difference. If you don't practice, most people, you're gonna get up there, get up there. And um, and, uh. and put in filler words or trip up on yourself, right? Or you're not going to present it exactly the way you want. So practice. Film yourself if you can, which everyone has an iPhone or a smartphone these days. You can film yourself. You'll see a lot of things. Most people don't like watching themselves on film or listening to themselves recorded, but that's a good thing. You'll see. I had a, one of the partners um and odd 20 times in a paragraph. He didn't realize it until we filmed it and watched it. And if you're moving around a lot when you shouldn't be, you'll see it in the film. A trick, once you put, put the recording up, is speed it up. Put it at five or 10 times. And if you're moving around when you shouldn't be, you'll be moving all over the place and you'll see it really clearly in the video. But you may not notice it when you're standing up there. At the same time, get, if you've got a friend, a roommate, family member, anyone you can get to watch it and give you feedback, that's huge. Don't get someone, don't get your mom who's going to say it's great. You want someone who's going to criticize it, right? At this point, if they help you, they help you win $5,000. So you want them to be honest with things that you could improve. Keep an eye on the time. There'll be a timer right down the corner of the stage. Don't run over because it's really a bummer if you've got a really strong closing statement, which you should close on a strong note, and you get cut off 10 seconds before the end of your presentation. Right? You'll, you'll lose it, and that last thing you want to leave the judges with just won't be there. So don't. And this, the practice makes a difference in this, right? If you've practiced it 15 times, you're gonna know exactly how long 12 minutes is and how long it feels. But if you haven't, you probably won't, yeah? So it is 12 minutes. 10 to 12 minutes is the right. Okay. Shoot for 10, because you're getting cut off at 12. Okay. Basically, it's a... If you're, yeah, if, you're, if you've got it really well rehearsed, you can, you can go right up to 12. But if you go 10 minutes, you're not going to get penalized for going 10 minutes. You're not. No. Although it's two minutes more that you could have convinced the judges. Right. Right? So that, that's kind of your call, but... Don't walk up and talk for six. No. That's probably not going to help you. Right? 10, 12 minutes is not a lot of time to present a whole business. Right? That's, it's, that's short. Right? 10 minutes when you're, you know, talking about something in class that you don't particularly care about or is fairly simple, that's a long time. When you're trying to present an entire business that someone's gonna put money down on in 10 minutes, 12 minutes, that's not a lot of time, right? So a full business plan 
Or you guys did all a summary plan, right? This was an abbreviated plan. How long was everyone to? Five, six, seven, ten Eight. pages? Nine. Nine pages, yeah. Twelve, right, fifteen. A full business plan is gonna be thirty to fifty pages. Right? So you're cut putting the most important highlights from thirty to fifty pages of dense text in ten or twelve minutes. Right? Okay. Prepare for the QA. Right? Prepare your presentation, but also prepare for the QA time. Right? You've got 10, 12 minutes on stage for your pitch, and then you've got up to five minutes of QA. Five minutes goes really fast <coughs> when it's you talking and the judge is asking questions. But that's your chance to convince, to seal the deal with the judges, right? They're going to ask you whatever's weak in your presentation, they're going to find it. Right, they've sat through a lot of presentations like this. They've got a good eye for this. They'll find it. So be ready for that. That's where having people watch your presentation comes in. Have them think about what, what would they ask you. Right? And then write those down and have an answer. Yeah. And since you've done it, can you yeah. give us a couple of questions mm -hmm. that they, they would might ask you first? A couple of questions. It's gonna <laughs> depend on your business. Yeah, because I'm not ready for this question, but okay. That's fair. That's fair. It will definitely depend a lot on your business and what you talk about. Um, generic questions they're gonna ask. Where'd you get that number? Yeah, they may ask where you got that number. Be able to back your, your numbers. Yeah. Have they, if you guys haven't seen, we have all of our videos from last year up online. Yes. On I know that the quality is bad, so do not tell us. We know from a different <laughs> videographer. Don't tell me you can barely hear it because I know you can barely hear it. I sat through them all at home on full volume. So <laughs> I know that. But, but what that's an excellent. By looking through those, you'll see the types of questions that they ask. And then you'll also be able to see sort of how they progress through them. And that's definitely something that you can look into and gain some experience from even before the competition date. Yeah. So you just don't need to business plan. Don't business plan competition. Yeah. And we have a channel. That's a, that's a great recommendation, yeah. Watch okay. other other plans. You could go online, heck, watch Shark Tank, right? Yeah, kind of questions they ask, right? They're gonna be a little more ruthless than our judges will, but the same general idea, right? If there's something weak in your plan, they're gonna ask you about it. If uh, you leave out something major, right? If you don't ask them, you don't, ha you don't have an ask, right? For how much money you need to start this or what, what it's gonna take. They'll probably ask you, okay, you got a great idea, what's the next step? Right? Uh, you may get the question, this is relatively common and often left out, is what's the uh, succession plan or exit strategy, right? Are you planning on running this business for 20 years? Or are you planning on getting up and running in three years and then selling it, right? Are you planning on getting bought out by a larger company? Right? What, what's your plan to get out? Because <coughs> if an investor puts in money, say they put in $50,000 and they get 30% of your company. They want to know how they're going to get their money back. If you're going to run the company for 20 years, well, when are they going to get their money back? But if you're going to exit it in three or five, three to five years, clearly they'll get a payoff. Which doesn't mean you have to tell them, I'm going to leave, you know, sell the company in three to five years. Be honest with whatever your plan is, but that's a, a question to five. Yeah? I should be, are we allowed to give them handouts before we get up? Mm -hmm. You can give things, visual aids, like things if you want to show the judges kind of. It's like a piece of paper as you go. Yeah. As long as there's no checks or cash involved. <laughs> <laughs> no bribes, but. Well, yeah, yeah. Paper, like, what are you thinking? Is it like a bunch of things they have to read? No, no, no. Okay. It's like the ge just general. Uh, I just want them to have the uh, the the whole um, income statement, pro forma income statement in front of them at the time. Does that make sense? Okay. Teams don't usually give that out because then it's like, it's like, is that okay for us to do? What do you mean by the income statement? Do yeah, no, it's okay to do. Are you planning on walking through it? Oh no, I just want them to have it, just for any questions. They won't have. really. Okay. It. I mean, they if you won't don't address it. They're not going to look at because when your presentation's done, they won't. I'm going to be them. addressing it while I'm talking. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. If you're, are you going to reference it while you're? I, I might reference. You know, it. look at this line or this so, page. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's fine. Cool. Yeah, perfect. it's quick. They won't have time to really look through it, but if you're gonna draw their attention to certain things, then yeah. Cool. But definitely, perhaps have 
time one of you guys pass it out for him, I think. You know, pro- provide it to yeah, them yeah. right before you go out, okay. and Josh can pass it to the judges so that you're not fumbling with it. Just beforehand, we can put that thing in their packet right behind your plan. But I want it. I just want the. Yeah, 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 just just pass it out. Fine. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of the same question. Uh huh. Um. So would we be? Would they like look at it before we start presenting? Mm-hmm. No. Or so that's where. You can you can pat you can't pa- they don't so these they're not these judges are not the same judges who are grading who graded your and are grading plans. currently mm-hmm. your written plans mm-hmm. right are the written plans are two judges that are not going to be the live judges right mm-hmm. so they're not going to know anything about your business before you go up mm-hmm. so if you want to present your financials and you want to give that to them feel free but if they see something and they're like this is wrong that's kind of where you could be at a disadvantage because if you messed up on them in your written, and then you give them again in your presentation, you're gonna get a bad grade twice. So if they're good though, and you wanna give them to them so they can see that, then maybe that could help you. Yeah, overall, if you're really strong in the financials, right, and how you've justified yeah. everything, and, and you've got a really strong, if you're making your case largely from your financials, yeah. then that may be a smart move. If, you're, if the financials are not your main focus, and it isn't for everyone, right? Some people, the, the marketing is really what drives it home. Some people, it's the creative idea. It might be the intellectual property, the patent you have. It might be a variety of different things, right? I like the thing you're really strong in. If your financials are so-so, don't give all the judges a copy to scrutinize. <laughs> right? it's, it's, you're, not, you're not doing yourselves any favors in that case, right? Highlight the things that are important and matter on the slides, big enough for everyone to read them. That was a mistake that I made. Is that we, we put most of the financial statements up there. You can't read them, right? especially when you're 30 feet away. Yeah. That kind of goes into my question. So we did like three to five year projections, but okay. obviously I don't want to walk through how all I got them. all of those numbers. Yeah. And like even year one, it's probably a little bit too in depth for. Yeah, you attending. probably don't need so to walk through all the details. Can I just highlight like gross profit, net operating income, things like that, or yeah. do I need to yeah. have a full year's statements like broken? You out? don't in, in the presentation. No. It'll just take too much time. You wouldn't be able to get through it. Yeah, so kind of, I guess, the same question. So, for, like, I had to do, like, figures on what price I need to charge, like, for the, mm-hmm. ex- for the extras and stuff. Mm-hmm. Should I just put <laughs> those numbers I came to or kind of show how I got to those? Because kind of, I mean, it's kind of the same. Question. Time you have. If, right. If. Because, like, I, I did formulas for, like, for, like, the detergents and the fabric yeah. shop. Like, I. Sure. Worked it through how much like I had to charge per yeah. dose and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, try to just put the final I would, number. I would probably just put final number. Final number. Yeah. Um, that may be an area if someone's got expertise in costing or something that's there, they, they may them. ask you, okay. right? And then you can tell them, you know, this particular. They're only going to ask you one, maybe. Yeah. Give them yeah. an answer, right? This is what how I figured it out. Mm-hmm. Um, on the Q and A, if you don't know the answer, like Alex said. Don't make it up. <laughs> they will know. Okay. If you if you've got a partial answer, right, give what you've got, and then say, you know, that's not something we had a chance to to look into. I'll, if you want to, I'll find out for you, and I'd be happy to get back to you with it. Right. So especially some of you may be doing this for the experience, and some of you may be ready to actually start these companies, or or you will at some point. Right. Especially if that's the case, when you walk off that stage, it's not over. Some of those people might actually write you a check to start this business, or they might sit down and give you five hours of their time that would save you years of mistakes, right, to get the business started. So the ongoing piece is is definitely valuable. Questions about anything at this point? Yeah, the other last thing is just enjoy yourselves. If you look up. If you're up there, it looks like you're bored or you're not. You're not passionate about the business, they're not going to be passionate about the business. So there was someone that was up there last year, a gal who didn't have financials, right, that were written down. She uh, was working as a one person team, so she didn't have a, a whole lot of, of team backing her, but she was so passionate about it and had a really good story that one of the judges told me, she's the only person that presented today that I would invest in. And I would invest in her today if she was ready for it. So, 
right? If, if you're weak on certain areas, that doesn't, that's not a deal breaker. Questions about anything at this point? Yeah. Um, so I know that like, I talk with my hands. So uh -huh. ha is that like, okay? I mean, yeah. I know like it can't be like all over the place, but I talk with my hands and I- Yeah, if you're not, dis as long as, they can still listen to you and you're not distracting them by what's going on, mm -hmm. by all means. Okay. If you're you're a team of one or okay, myself, yeah. then it's not as big of a deal. Okay. The the movement and the fidgeting is <laughs> if you've got other people up there, right, and they're moving, the judge is gonna be watching them, not you. Uh, okay. Or if you're gonna show a video or something, or you're trying to direct their attention at something specific on the screen, mm -hmm. right? Don't move while they're supposed to be watching that. Okay. That'll be distracting. Mm -hmm. Right? But otherwise, you know. Keep your kind of the tone mm -hmm. calm, yeah. right? For the most part, but you can yeah. you like to do hand gestures and so forth. Um, I have another question. Yeah, that goes into it. Can you like? I don't want to say walk around the stage, but like. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can move around the stage. Oh, okay. Um, me so for long. Stay in front of the the backdrop. There should mm -hmm. be a big white backdrop on there. Stay in front of that, or else you'll go off the camera, and okay. people will you'll be far away from the judges. But you can move. Uh, we we planned moves on on our presentation, right? If you're talking about several points, one way you can emphasize and kind of help people distinguish is you talk about point one here, then you move, and now we're going to talk about point two, and then we're going to conclude over here. And so the, that is a physical way to help people distinguish. Don't uh, you won't have a screen to worry about because the screens are up high, so you won't have to worry about blocking that. So that's kind of a helpful thing you can do. Yeah. So it's in. So it's, it's in, in Denal. Oh, it's in Denal. No, no, my no, bad. No, yes. it's in. No, 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 no. no. It's in the C Center. C Center. Okay. My bad. It's in the C Center. It's, <laughs> it's been in other places in the past. So, so is, is it not just the two projectors? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. But you're oh. gonna, so. But the front of the stage, right, is going to be set up for you to stand. Right. And there'll be. I think we have a little table you can. Put down water bottle or notes if you want, and then there's a, I think it's 16 feet or so backdrop. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay, just the back. That's on the front, the, of, the front of the stage. Yeah. Gotcha. And then you said there's like a teleprompter. Or there'll be what? there'll be a monitor on the TV to follow front, along because I don't want to. Like, that will be the same as what's on behind. Okay, it. cool. Yes. And then in the C side of this year, so they have a TV in the back too. So you oh, can look up. oh, they do? Yeah, you can look up and see what's behind you as well. That's nice. Although that'll be really, it's it's really, the one up in front of you is going to be obviously the same as the other ones. It's a lot smaller, so you're not going to necessarily, necessarily be able to read off of that. If you know what your slides look like, you'll know what slide you're on, but you won't be able to read off that one up there. Yeah. The one in front no, of you. No, that's the one I'm saying. Like, I don't want to, I just don't want to be like turning to yeah. look like I yeah. just don't yeah. know. No, uh, good question. Yeah. We'll, yeah. yeah. You're not the only one that has that problem. Yeah, so yeah it's up front. Yeah. Not everyone can, you know, see from the back of their head. Yeah. We took that into account. More questions? Okay. Real quick, I want to introduce Diego. Diego was one of our winners last year, and he has agreed to come tonight and just talk to you guys if you guys, you know, want to ask him any questions on his recent experience. Um, and yeah, you want to say anything, Diego, on how it was for you? Yeah. Um, Kenny really, you know, he kind of broke it down really well and kind of um, said everything that I would say. Now, a couple things, and I'm sorry if I repeated it, I wasn't here the entire time. But for me, one of the things that I found most important in the experience was justifying at least the first three months, the first six months, the first year of like of, of your sales. You know, because a lot of it is, is, you know, you can speculate as to like how much you really are going to make. Um, but having like at least a very like good estimate of what you're gonna make in the very beginning is important because um, you know if you just say like oh I'm gonna sell this and I'm gonna sell it for this amount of money and this is how much you're gonna make in a year they're gonna look at that and they're gonna judge that they're gonna be like well well no you wouldn't be able to make that much money if you were only having this amount of you know so like they're gonna look at that and they're gonna question you on that that's something that I experienced um, last year in the competition. Um, I was scrutinized on that, and also I know that other people in the competition last year were scrutinized on that as well, um, and years prior to that that I attended and watched. And so that's one of the big things. And also, and again, I don't know if Kenny said this, but the other thing is do something that makes you stand out. 
So whether that be in the very beginning, you give your, you give like a fun introduction, something serious, do something that makes your presentation memorable. These judges are going to have to do more than just one presentation, and you want something that's going to be like it's going to catch their eye. It's going to make them be like, oh wow, okay, and it's going to make them think about it, especially when they're judging it at the end and considering who is going to win. Whoever stands out the most by doing something creative, doing something wacky, doing something very serious, it depends on what you, what kind of business you have, um, it's really going to help you in the long run. And it has to just do with your presentation skills, and it's also going to have something to do with you. You know, It's going to be some personal touch to who you are, right, and the way you choose to present your business. Um, those are two really big ones. Um, what kind of questions did you, do you remember getting asked by the judges at the end? Do you remember? I got, I got, a, I got a really neat question, and I remember... Um, Josh talked to me about it because we didn't answer it well. Like we didn't, we didn't. No, we didn't. I'll be honest with you, we didn't. It was they were asking why we didn't have like a subscription model for our company. And uh -huh. when, when they what were was the company? Just as a recap, for everyone. It was it was a smartwatch for children. Mm -hmm. um, and what we had done was we were offering um, people to allow them to have coverage, like network coverage, on on their smartwatches or without it. And if without it, it would just be connected to Wi-Fi. But you can also have network coverage for like 10 bucks a month or something like that. Um, when they asked the question, I assumed that they were asking why they didn't make it mandatory to have the network coverage because we, we got some gains on that. But they meant why we didn't make the whole watch in general subscription based, which means we sell, we send it to them and they can do it monthly. They can own the watch monthly. I guess it's be like leasing it. Yeah, basically the same way cell phone ownership works. Yeah, is. yes, yes. Why we didn't do that instead. Um, but when we answered it, we didn't answer it that way because we didn't we didn't understand the question and we were like, well, we yeah. don't want to force people to have coverage. That's kind of how we answered it. But really, they were asking why we weren't just making a subscription model. So maybe a tip out of that is listen to the question. Yeah. And, and, and if you're not yeah. sure what they're asking, you can clarify. Yeah. Oh, They'll okay. be more so impressed. Like, yes. Yeah. 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 Like You'll still be mic'd. Okay. They're gonna have a mic. Only one judge at a time. Okay. So the judges have a handheld mic that they get to pass. So okay. hopefully only one of them will be talking to you at a time, okay. but no promises. Okay. Yeah. Like when, you, when, you, when you're up there and you know you got a lot of people staring at you, you can get a little nervous and just try to answer quickly. Yeah. So take a moment. Yeah, breathe. Breathe. Analyze the question. Okay. But definitely, even if you even if you heard the question and you're like, oh shoot, I have no idea, ask them to clarify it again. So right. Give you a second. So give you a second to think about it and really <laughs> make sure you heard them. Say, uh, could you repeat that or could you clarify? Right. So take your time answering those, and then give a good, quick answer without rambling. Yeah, you don't need to. And, and be honest as well, because like uh, another yeah. question that I got asked was like about a financial ratio that I had no idea. So I was just like, I don't know, and I said I didn't know, and you know <laughs> what? I still won. So <laughs> they liked my honesty. Um, and then that's true. You didn't make it up. They would have known that if you made it. Oh up. yeah, they would have for sure <laughs> known. Yeah. Um, and then I guess the, like the last thing I would say is, um, at least for me. Going up there in the very beginning was a little nerve wracking, but then as the more time passed, it became kind of like infectious to be on there. Like I liked being on there, I enjoyed it. I gained confidence as the presentation kept going on. Um, so, you know, if you might, you might be nervous in the very beginning, you know, kind of like just breaking into the presentation, but I just get more comfortable on stage the longer I'm on there. So if, if some of you guys have um, more than one member in your team, I'm sorry for those who don't have more than one member, but for some of you guys that don't have that have more than one member in your team, what I suggest is breaking up the presentation to allow yourself breaks in the very beginning, especially. So if you have you know one slide, have the first three slides be broken up into like whoever is in the team, so that way you can start like you know kind of getting comfortable in your environment, taking a breather, and allowing the other people to speak, and then you know you don't have that much to speak in the very beginning. You know, like oh I only have to get through the next minute right now. Then I can pass it along to my partner for the next slide, and then he can think, okay, I only have to get to the next minute. And then, of course, once you get further on into the presentation, the areas that you guys are going to specialize in, make sure to take time on those areas that you guys choose to specialize in. Um, but in the very beginning, just it allows you some time to breathe, get more comfortable in the environment, and then just present more effectively. If you guys need note cards, you can use them. Don't stand up there and read them. That will definitely hurt you. But we had note cards. The three by five cards are a couple so that you don't lose your place. That's because you don't want to. You, the biggest thing is that they'll provide comfort for you, right? 
it'll it'll allow you to be able to speak more naturally without worrying if you're gonna forget something. Right. Don't you dictate do, everything you every do word you're gonna say. Out, but. Because you know, there's been teams who they were like, I don't need no cards, and then they get up there and they, they freeze, freeze and then they're screwed. So you don't want that. And then going off what David said, I know like you guys are all gonna be kind of presenting on your own. Josh, your team is still kind of figuring out, right? We have that's my question. Okay, cool. So this this is me. But for you guys who are presenting solo like you give yourself breaks kind of put like a startling statistic or something on the screen and like you kind of say like introduce it right and then take a pause you can, you can like pause for dramatic effect on you things. are allowed to breathe during the exact take a pause <laughs> and like let yourself get recomposed you know put something on the screen to take the attention away from you for a second yeah absolutely and like yeah do that yeah, add on to that so um one of the reasons why we decided to do a smartwatch for for a baby is it was more for like a parent functionality. And one of the features that we added was it allowed the parent to know if the device got wet or if it was submerged underwater. And that was a huge thing because a lot of um, infants died um, from drowning. So what we did is we showed that statistic. We put that up. And of course, we're not just gonna be like, oh yeah, and by the way, this amount of kids die every year. No, like <laughs> we had a dramatic effect and we took a moment and we let that sink in, you know, and pause and then we kept going. So uh, my group is very confusing. Um, <laughs> okay. So uh, I'm on, I am on track, and tracking is happening literally the same time that this this presentation is happening. Okay. I'm able to sneak away. And, from the uh, meet from to the pitch. Meet to the, okay. Pitch there, <laughs> cool. To pitch this thing, but my friend uh, Paul, who's uh -huh. also on the team, uh, he he's not. He had, his event is literally at that same time. And, okay. And that takes priority because it is sure. a commitment. Um. And uh, so would it work? Like against, and then one, uh, and then one of our members is not too good at public speaking. So would okay. it work for us or against us to put it, put him up there and say, "Here you go, talk in front of people," or should we just kind of like put him off to the side and say, eh, "You don't talk." It's kind of your call. I mean, there's no point value associated with the number of people you have up there. That's my question. So, there, so yeah, there's no going to say like, "Oh, they're not going to hear." So they're not going to say, "Right, there were three of you on your team. Why are you the only one up there?" Exactly. They might ask you why you're the only one up here, right? And then you tell them. Oh yeah, I got this and we yeah, had a prior commitment, right? And you know, but it's not. We're not going to be docked because you're not going to be docked. Yeah, that's yeah. all. Yeah. I have one last thing to add. Um, one of the things that I found is, you know, it, it it is not good to lie, but if you find yourself in the presentation having accidentally said a number that had no meaning, don't go back if you if you don't mean to. You know, if it's, if it's questioned at the end, then be honest and be like, oh, I made a mistake. But don't go back, because people don't notice everything. The only person that's gonna be noticing everything yeah. is you. So if you'll you trip yourself up. <laughs> yeah, so if you accidentally say a number that you didn't mean to say, unless it's very like important for the context, you can correct yourself, but unless it's very important, just keep going, just go through it, because it's gonna look a lot worse for you to be like, oh wait, no, that's not it. I don't really know what it is. It's gonna look a lot worse. So just keep going through the presentation, yeah. and then if it's screwed nice at the end, that's one thing. But you know, you don't know if the judges might catch it or not catch it. So yeah, you'll throw yourself off your groove. Yeah, you will. Spend too much time. Yeah. So, but yeah, in terms of how not comfortable is your friend up on stage? Oh no, they they can do it. But I'm just saying. Because like, it might be worth if they can having them up there. I'm, I but love But you being in front of you people. pitch most of it. Okay. Right. Have them up there. Introduce themselves. They do a little, and they might a small also, piece of it. They might right? not also be able to make it at all. So You're right. That's yeah. the whole thing. It, it doesn't it's hurt to show fun. more of a team, okay. and certainly if they're not there, talk about them and what they bring to the team. Yeah. Okay. That's Perfect. you don't want to lose that, right. because then talking about this idea, right? Someone's gonna. I'm exaggerating a little bit, though maybe not. Someone's gonna cut your business a check for a million bucks, right? Right. One person putting a million bucks on is a huge liability. Yeah. You've got two or three, you distribute it a little bit. So there's a value in having more people to your team. So if you have them and they're not there, make sure you talk about them. Yeah, and I can talk about them. Yeah. So. But thank you so much. Yeah, no worries. Anything else? Okay. <laughs> when you get up there, right, your written plan's done. So don't sweat that anymore. It is what it is, right? It's only 30% of it, and like we've said, no one who's judging you has seen that. So if you feel like you bombed that, it's not biasing anyone that's there, right? They've never seen it.
So only what you get up there and say. We've had, had people in the past whose written plans sucked. And they did really well at the presentation. Right? My, my written plan wasn't too good. I wasn't going to say it. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, but you guys put the time in the presentation to show. Yeah, we were charismatic. And yeah, our, our presentation was very good. And remember, I don't know how much it valued this time, but last year it was 70%. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so. Oh, last thing. Um, if you guys get the chance, when you guys are practicing your presentation, go to the city center. Go to the city oh, center, go on top of the stage. Go on top of the stage and figure yeah. out what placement will work best. Figure out where you want to move in the stage. If you're trying to do some movements for effect, figure out which movements are most effective. <laughs> um, yeah, go, go over there. It, it's, uh, it's usually open. Go ahead. Oh, no, 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 you can oh. finish it's it. Usually, it's yeah. usually open. Like You can go literally at any time, I'm pretty sure. Like, I, don't, I don't know if they even walk it. Yeah. So, no, that's not a bad idea, going like late at night or something with your whole team and just running through the whole thing. You won't be able to use the projectors because you know, yeah. yeah. we don't have access to that, but like, just yeah. try it. Yeah. And if you guys have like um, friends or like not, not too many people, but figure out how it would feel if, if you just had a couple friends go and watch it, like that, never, that don't know anything mm -hmm. about it. Figure out how it would be for them. You know, it gives you a little bit more pressure and it makes you a little bit more nervous, but it's also going to be a lot more realistic. Yeah. So what I was going to say is that you said something about not having a screen. So if you go to the dance room, that's Gen 204, I think. Yeah, they have a screen in there, so you can plug your. I mean, I know it's not. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, yeah, that's a good yeah. idea. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because yeah. yeah. that's what I, I've done. Like, yeah. 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 Practice. Mm -hmm. In different places. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, as realistic as possible. Dress up and practice once or twice. Ooh. Like however you're gonna be that. I gotta figure out my outfit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess like two quick, quick questions about like how many people have showed up, like estimate. Uh, people go kind of come in and out yeah. because it's a long event. Yeah. But I think Professor Burkhart just told me that she's expecting around a hundred of her students to come. She made an extra credit opportunity yeah. and they're oh, supposed really? to stay the whole time. Oh. So yeah, that's awesome. And they have to, <laughs> so and they have to write a paper yeah. on it, so they'll all be there. And, and she's got about a hundred students? Wow, wow, wow. Right? Okay. Yeah. So I probably figured there'll be 150, maybe a little more in and out throughout the day. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, and then also, um, you might have already said it, but so you guys aren't on the panel with the judges? No. Um, that would be not fair. That, it would so be too judges, biased because we know things we know too much about your pictures already. The the people, those are the only ones. <laughs> those are the, there's five, yeah. five judges, unless someone happens to get sick at the last minute. Right? There's yeah. five judges. Yes. Would we know our score on the uh, written business plan? Not before the competition. Okay. The total score will get sent back to you and feedback afterwards for you to know if you want. Yeah. But, but you won't know the score before. But it, it doesn't. In some ways, it doesn't matter because it's different people judging you. That doesn't really help you too much going there's, into the competition, knowing. If you found out tomorrow, you know, well, your financials are weak, there's not that much you can do about it, <laughs> right? You're better off spending yeah. the time on your presentation at this stage. Don't worry about changing anything at this point. Just yeah. 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 That's about it. If anyone has any more questions for me, yeah. <laughs> I gotta go. <laughs> hey. Um, the last thing I can tell you guys is just have fun. It's it's so much fun. I genuinely, genuinely, genuinely enjoy doing it. Um, I did enjoy the guys that did not lose after I won. <laughs> I think it, I would have been more highly scrutinized because they were repeating judges to be honest with you. So that's probably true. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but yeah, it's it's so much fun and it's a great experience. And whether you win or lose, it's gonna look really good on a resume. So true. It's true. So. Yeah. Good luck, you guys. Thank Thanks, you. Bye, Diego. Any questions for anyone else about presentation or just any logistics or anything? About Friday night? What would you put on the resume? What would you, like, on extracurriculars? Uh, like or like extracurricular, yeah. something you participated in. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things to pull up and bring up an interview, you depending on what you're talking yeah. yeah. for. Yeah. Right? Someone says, give me an example of when you worked with the team, right? <laughs> Give me an example. Yeah. Does anyone want a pitch deck outline? I think I passed these out last time, right? Does anyone want one of these? Yeah. Okay. And I'm gonna come collect forms for you guys. I do need those. Yeah. Thank you. Everyone last should day, have think, had at least one. From that outline, yeah, I you don't. The parchment photo. Release? You want yes. every section that's on that outline, at some level, in some way, but you can have other things. 
So some sure. of you should have different things that right that apply to yeah. your business. So yeah. say you're doing you've got a physical presence, whether it's a center, whether it's a restaurant, right? Something about how your building's going to be laid out may be relevant, right? If you're doing manufacturing, your costs need to be more specific, right? If you're doing uh, a variety of different things, put in other sections if they apply to you, right? You're not limited to what's on there. And then, oh, you have a question? Yeah, so I know that the pitch deck is like the 12 slide pitch deck. Mm -hmm. So how many slides can you say? How many do you have? Like, it's like 13 right now. That's I mean, I'm going, I'm going through it and like I have to change stuff, but I was just, in general, like mm -hmm. how many do you need? Well, you have up to 12 minutes. So if you think 30 seconds at least, per slide, that's pretty quick, maybe 45 seconds a slide. Mm -hmm. Depends on what's on the slide, right? Sure. If you've got, you know, four sentences, that's going to take a little while. If you just have one picture of something, that's quick. Okay. So, if you feel like you're, when you're practicing, that you're just like clicking, click, 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 they're probably not getting a chance to see it. Mm -hmm. So, okay. if you're pushing more than 20, I'd be concerned. Um, yeah, too much. Definitely. Yeah. But, it's kind of just a guide. Like, don't have one slide and don't have a hundred. Like, yeah. it's just a. It's just I mean, a yeah, yeah. It's I just, just, I just yeah. was doing it and I was just like, yeah. Okay. Um, and, then, and then. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Um, mm -hmm. so, yeah. What was my question? Okay, go ahead. Because I okay. have yeah. Last note for the 90 second yeah. competition yeah. on Friday. Um, it's very different from Saturday competition in the sense that you'll have no visual aids. You're just basically talking to the <laughs> two judges there and like everyone else will be in attendance, but like it's really just a conversation, right? The point of the elevator spiel is if you had 90 seconds in an elevator with the CEO and they said, oh, what do you do? And you were able to tell them about your business as much as possible so that by the end of that elevator ride, they would be like, here's my business card, let's get in touch. Mm -hmm. So you have to sell them on it in 90 seconds. That's no PowerPoints, nothing. You're not gonna have anything, just talking to them. Yeah. Is yeah. the ask in the pitch, the 90 second pitch? I would say it's oh, yeah. you, okay. need to, you need to mention what you're looking for in okay. the sense of like what you need. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'd have the ask in there. So. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Yeah. So it's happening in the same room where everyone else is. So is everyone quiet and watching you give your 90 yes. second pitch? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes. I thought we have, a, we have like, like a half an hour time slot right. to where we're going to take a break from eating and mingling and stuff, we're gonna do the 90 second pitch and then afterwards we'll have more time for that, same thing. So it's gonna be a part of the night. It's gonna start and everyone's gonna be quiet and attentive. Yeah. Um, Friday night, where is this? Friday night, it's in Grim Hall, 302. Okay. It's upstairs, third floor. Check yeah. your email too, check yeah. your email, it's all in there. And then, um, damn, I just had my question and I lost it again. Yeah. I have too much to My friend who's not in the competition uh, told me that all business Right, right. So some other people might show up. Okay. Um, it hasn't been a huge, like a, a huge. The competition there's a lot more people in the competition. Okay. I mean th that uh, uh, that um, attend. Yeah. The mixer hasn't been a hugely it's popular event. Second time the mixer event's been done. Yeah. Okay. So it's right. don't expect a ton of people to be there. There there could be fifty, but I mean for sure there'll be all the teams, the judges, a couple other people. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for the mixer, is it more like business casual dress or still like? Yeah, not you, business casual. You could, you could be more business casual yeah. if you wanted but to. But like, don't have to wear jacket. And, if you don't want to, I guess you don't like have tie, to. Tie. I'd wear a jacket or tie. Well, tie, yeah. Yeah, they're yeah. presentable, but you don't need to wear a full suit. Okay, you can't, you can't go wrong if you overdress. That's why I said business professional for both. But okay. if you want to dress a little bit less, don't wear a tuxedo. That's probably the yeah. best. Yeah. Sweet, you guys gotta go. It's past six, so thank you for coming. Pick up some grab what else or your specific things, feel free. Yeah, please. And grab your shirts if you haven't got a shirt already. And wear them. So people come. Let's knock it out. Yeah, grab it. That's one thing. Two hours. Yeah, we are. You guys are. Four corners. You guys are competing. What's that? Oh, that's right, you've got our examples. So what I, I that got picked out. Should we do this? It was 35 minutes. So, we the grad. No, that's what we brought in. See, that's what I was saying. It was probably me. I was at the first See, that's what I was saying. Like, I wanted to do it like, like, Amazon, he's at 80.
the case. So take what you you know, you're serious about this. If you want to take what you got Oh, like I I had it for another class. I already kinda had this was all like snowballing into it, but like I wanted it to go along with like I was sticking with the guideline and and so I made my eight pages, but I made sure like I don't know like I think you can do it. I was just like, a legit business plan is, is uh, like what you said, is way longer. Yeah. 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 Six hundred yeah. eight pages. So it's separated by experience, age, things like that. We had a lot of a lot of people that. Uh, so the strategy. You know, they've got the three other twenty-page papers they've got to write at the end of the semester. No, I know. So people yeah. Brought yeah. It. Only there because of the page requirement, which is kind of the same reason here. There's one team that's just going to lump it. So it's 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 